we've got people lined up for questions. I just got one more, because you used the word Christian. Have you ever asked God for forgiveness? That's a tough question. I, I don't think in terms of, I have, I'm, I'm a religious person. Shockingly, because people are so shocked when they find this out. Uh, I'm Protestant, I'm Presbyterian. And I go to church and I love God and I love my church. And Norman Vincent Peale, the great Norman Vincent Peale was my pastor. The power of positive thinking. Everybody's heard of Norman Vincent He would give a sermon you never wanted to leave. Sometimes we have sermons and every once in a while we think about leaving a little early, right? Even though we're Christian. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, Frank, would give a, survey, would give a sermon. I'm telling you, I still remember his sermon. It was unbelievable. And what he would do is he'd bring real life situations, modern day situations into the sermon. And you could listen to him all day long. When you left the church, you were disappointed that it was over. He was the greatest guy. And then, you know, he passed away, but he was a great, the, the, he wrote The Power of Positive Thinking, which is but, a great book. But have you ever asked God for forgiveness? I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. I think I, if, I, if I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. Now, when I take, you know, when we go and church and, and when I drink my little wine, which is about the only wine I drink, and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. And I do that as often as possible because I feel cleansed, okay? But, uh, you know, to me, that's important. I do that. But in terms of officially, I should, I see, I could say absolutely, and everybody, I don't think in terms of that. I, I think in terms of let's go on and let's make it right. So let's. You were listening to Donald's own words earlier this summer in that interview. Things could have changed between then and now, and perhaps he has asked for forgiveness and repented. Who knows? But I wanted to make sure that you heard out of his own words his response to that simple question. I know in myself, you know in yourselves, whether you have ever repented and asked God for forgiveness. So to think that a pertinent 70 year old man or so doesn't know, that should be worrisome. He mentioned Norman Vincent Peale as being his pastor and what a great man he was. I don't know a lot about Norman Vincent Peale, but I'm going to show you a little bit about Norman Vincent Peale. And one of the things that I find odd is that Norman Vincent Peale was a 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemason. So we have this minister who he said was his pastor, that this man was also a high level 33rd degree Freemason. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can read here. Uh, it also lists, you know, Billy Graham endorsed him and so on. So I wanted to make sure that everyone knew the man that he was talking about that was quite famous in the, in the religious circles was in fact a 33rd degree Freemason at the same time that he was a minister. This is another interesting article. Did Soros free Donald Trump of a $312 million debt? So a little over 10 years ago, Trump started to build the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago. It says he received a loan from Deutsche Bank for $650 million bucks. Also, a $160 million mezzanine loan from a group of private investors, which included George Soros. Now, if, if you want to say he's a globalist and he's trying to bring the country down and whatnot, you would have to say, why is he making a business deal that includes George Soros? 
There were other entities listed also, Fortress Investment Group and Blackacre Capital. The loan was estimated to be as high as 360 million bucks with the interest. It says after seven years, he was on his way to paying off the main loan to Deutsche Bank. Reasons that were unexplained to the public, the majority of the mezzanine loan was forgiven by the loan's original lenders, of which George Soros would be one. No media outlet that covered that deal put together the pieces and told the public that Soros let Trump off the hook for between 82 and 300 million and 12 million bucks in debt. Why would he give what amounts to a big debt relief to Trump during a financially successful period in Trump's life? Are they friends, enemies, or business partners? They heard the old saying, hey, nothing personal, it's just business. They've come across this article of where these private investors, this bizarre deal, followed a money trail and a likely partnership between them. Now, a mezzanine loan is a loan which is far more expensive than a bank loan. It needs to be paid off more quickly to avoid the interest. It needs to be paid back in full to keep the lender from taking ownership of the asset. With debt capital, it gives the lender the rights to convert an ownership or equity interest in the company if the loan is not paid back in time and in full. Since this loan is usually provided to the borrower very quickly with little due diligence on the part of the lender and little or no collateral on the part of the borrower, this type of financing is aggressively priced with the lender seeking return in the 20 to 30 percent range. And we scroll down and we find the loan document says Mr. Trump could have to pay Fortress as much as $360 million, depending on how long the loan accrues interest. Combined with the Deutsche Bank senior loan, he would owe more than $1 billion total. And then it goes on to say that so far Trump had lined up buyers for a bit less than the 600 million of condo units and condo hotel units in a residential market that has virtually seized up. He's closed around 200 million in sales so far, with roughly 380 million in contract. 2012, he continued to owe the lenders, but sales of the condos picked up and his tower had a 69% occupancy rate. And you go down and you find out after a number of years have passed, several things are likely to have happened. The mortgage has been significantly paid down, the value of the underlying building has increased, and the owner has waited for a time in the economic cycle where mortgage rates are low. At that point, they will refinance the original mortgage and put the balance to work somewhere else where it can make even more money. Trump did not have to worry about paying back the majority of this mezzanine loan. A special group of lenders came in and erased a significant portion of the obligation. That group was the original lenders, Soros, Fortress, and Blackacre, all of whom decided to forgive Trump's future interest payments on the loan, selling it to him at the massively reduced price of $48 million. To put it in starker terms, Soros and others effectively gave Trump possibly hundreds of millions of dollars in debt forgiveness while cutting down the principal by $82 million. They could have given him $312 million forgiveness. And a bigger twist to the story, after buying out the junior debt, the mezzanine loan, Trump says he now owes about $120 million that comes due in a year and a half. And then there's a question, 
Why wasn't Trump expected by Soros, Fortress, and Blackacre to pay back their riskier high-interest mezzanine loan? Also, how was he able to pay down his Deutsche Bank loan? Demonstrating the means to pay off all his loans, yet still have Soros and the others give him all that hundreds of millions of debt relief. This deal was made in a cloaked manner. It may have been the most generous amount of debt forgiveness ever given on a mezzanine loan. We rely on the original figures of the $160 million principal. This would be a $112 million giveaway. So, according to this article, Soros and Trump have done business together. This article goes on to state that in a recent interview, he may be hedging already. So what is it saying? Well, he was asked about same-sex marriage, and he said he is fine with it. It's settled its law. It's done. They've been settled, and I'm fine with that. So this man that everyone thinks is modern-day King Cyrus, these prophecy people, prophecy of Trump and whatnot, he's not standing against that sin. In this recent interview, he is fine with it. Then you go on to about Hillary and charging her. He has not decided whether to do it. I'm going to think about it. I want to focus on jobs, health care, border, immigration, all that stuff. Clinton did some bad things. But ultimately, the Clintons are good people. I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to hurt them. They're, they're good people. I don't want to hurt them. And I'll give you an answer the next time we do 60 Minutes. There you go. Meets with Obama at a terrific meeting. And another thing, to be likening this to biblical prophecy of the, the last Trump or the Trumpets, Trump Pence does not sound even remotely like Trumpets. Trumpets does not sound like Trumpets. Pence is something that you know it's a it's a piece of money if you go look it up in the dictionary you know his name is is like the money pence that has nothing to do with the trumpet so that is stretching things really far to be saying trump pence sounds like trumpets so he is fine with same sex marriage and that is against god that is against God's holy union set in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve of a man and a wife. These are the things that trouble me about this man. I don't trust this man. And I wanted to show people if they hadn't known about these things, what what I can find and show to you. To give you something to think about what, what is really happening here. Like I said, I wish that God would have given us a leader. Maybe he has given us this leader. But you can look at all these questionable things about this man. And it is pause to think. So I've given you something to think about.